What is good everybody? Today we are reviewing the WWE Ultimate Edition Coliseum Collection Wave Number 5. And in this set it does include the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Very sick set. We just had some images dropped just the other day that we did a full video on. We broke it down. I was very excited for the pack. I thought it looked excellent. I think these are going to be some of the better feeling figures of the year. And of course we won't know all that until we unbox them. We won't know all that until we rank them at the end of the year where they come in. And maybe one day we can rank every Coliseum Collection. But it seems like yesterday we got the first one with Hogan and Terry Funk. I'm said Terry Crews for some reason. And now we're all the way up to wave number five and we're looking forward to wave six and the rest of the Coliseum collection. Some of the most underrated figures that Mattel makes, but this video would not be possible without the great friends over at Mattel and the WWE Elite Squad. So a huge shout out to them. And I do want to tell you that this set goes up for order today. Actually today, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 p.m. Eastern. That would be 11 a.m. Central Time for you folks in the Central Time Zone like myself. But by the time you're seeing this, it should be up any minute. It may already be up. You can order this set right to your door, but I'm excited for this set. We have Ted DiBiase. We do have Ricky the Dragon, but a huge shout out to Mattel again for making this review possible, sending this coverage our way. We do have the Ultimate Edition there. On the side, you do get a nice image of Ted DiBiase and Ricky the Dragon right here, which looks pretty good. Old school WWE block logo, even though it didn't even exist then. Opposite side, we do have Ricky the Dragon, and then on the other side, you just get some logos and stuff like that. But the big thing is if you can, you can open up this shipper box right here. So this does come in like its own brown shipper, but then you get another shipper that you can unbox here. And on the side, you will see it says Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and you open it up and then voila you have this little open deal and you do have the figures individually packaged in here so you'll have Ted DiBiase right there you get your little cardboard divider with Coliseum Collection on the other side it's got the old school WWE background and then we dive in here and we do have Ricky the Dragon which is also very cool wait a minute man am I not tripping I thought it was supposed to come with like a money background or something hold up now I don't feel anything in there pull up the images man I could have swore it came with a money background am I hallucinating I don't know man I don't mess with that now you know they always go crazy with these little Easter eggs and stuff in here. You got the little Million Dollar Man crowd sign. You got some different people. I'm sure these are the family members of the people that work at Mattel. And then we do see some friendly faces back here. Steve, you got Bill. Then you got my main man, George, back here rocking the Elite Chain. What a beast. I think a dream come true would be to somehow get in there. You know, maybe one day I can get in here. MDT logo on my shirt or something like that, man. But here are both figures individually packaged. Ricky the Dragon, Ted DiBiase. Both look very fantastic as we're viewing them here. Of course, we will unbox them, go through all their accessories and every deal. But here's Ricky the Dragon right there. You got him in the black gear, black gi. His accessories are going to be stored down below, which we'll get into. And then on the back, you do have some different figures on the back there. All the different Coliseum Collection figures. And then, if you wanted to, I guess you could, could include the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Sarge. Kind of fits in there somewhere. But very cool nonetheless. And you guys know you can, of course, remove these backgrounds. This is how they're done. You can remove that background. And then that's how you remove the figure out of the packaging. Which is a pretty clever design. Because if you want to if you want to leave them like kind of men on card, quote unquote, you can do it that way. Or you can, you know, unbox them here then it gives you the option to do so here so there's Ted DiBiase right there and then flipping on the back it just has some different bio reads the same exact packaging just you know changing the info and whatnot but what we're gonna do is go ahead and crack these guys out of their packaging officially put them on the rotating base see what they're about and then we'll dive into everything there is to know about these action figures so let's get it started shall we so here we have Coliseum Collection Wave number 5 out of the packaging. Ted DiBiase and Ricky the Dragon. I'm really liking these figures a lot, man. I'd like to, uh, you know, I pull the figures out of the packaging. I pose them around. I like to, you know, shoot them, do some different things, man, before we get into the review so that I can really kind of digest what we have going on, kind of figure out where my thoughts are. You know, I don't just unbox them and, you know, throw it at the wall and, you know, talk about it for five seconds. You got to really dive in there. You got to get into all the details. Look at the nicks and the crannies of it. Develop your thoughts, and then we can put it into the video. But we will compare it to the rest of the Coliseum Collection. We'll compare it into some other Ricky the Dragon figures, some Ted DiBiase's, things like that. But I think the potential is high here. Will that be the case at the end of the video? We shall find out. But let's dive into the accessories of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And then we'll dive into the Ted DiBiase accessories and the Million Dollar Man himself. So for Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's accessories, what's really cool about the Coliseum Collection is they always said, this is what was already on the figure out of the packaging, but they always have the extra goods stored underneath the figure in the packaging, as you guys saw in the opening of the video. So you can take this and you open it up up and it reveals all the rest of the contents or accessories that you get with this figure including the two interchangeable heads the interchangeable hands you can remove this and then you guys will see underneath that it comes with a gi and a belt now one thing about this cloth goods is it's just kind of your like typical jacket it's kind of just a normal gi which i do like you have some cool branding and logos on there which i'm not entirely sure i don't know anything about these logos but maybe somebody else can let me know down in the comment section below i do i don't question the legitimacy of it i bet these are accurate and everything like that i just don't have any background knowledge 
damage on them. But I do like the gi and everything like that. It looks good on the figure, as you guys will see. And I like it a lot. I think it's a very nice quality accessory. And then you do get the belt that you can wrap around his waist. So you'd put the you'd put the gi on, and then you'd wrap it around his waist like that. And you guys will see this in the photography at the end of the video. You guys will see what the gi looks like on there and everything like that. So we'll, we will showcase that later. Now outside of that, we do get interchangeable head sculpts. Now this is a head sculpt we've seen before, I'm pretty sure. Actually, this I think this is new. Like the hair is new, and then you can remove the headband. So yeah, this actually is a brand new head sculpt. And it has very good likeness. I think it looks pretty good. Wish they, uh, it does have the 5 o'clock shadow. That's good. First, I thought they left off the 5 o'clock shadow, but it does look very, very good. I like the lip color and everything like that. And we also have this smiling head sculpt, which I also believe is a brand new head sculpt, which looks really, really good. I think they fixed some of the issues that we saw with that, that uh, earlier version of the Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And then we have this new yelling head sculpt, which I also like a lot. So I think all three of these are quality head sculpts. I don't really have an issue with any of them. At the end of the day, the likeness is good. I will say this one over here seems a bit oversized, maybe, but it may just be because he's opening his jaw, so it kind of elongates the head sculpt a little bit. Yeah, it's probably not a big deal, but it looks very good. All three of these are very quality, and this headband is removable. You could take that off if you wanted to. I don't really want to, though, so I'm not gonna. So you leave me alone. And then instead of removing the hands, I'm not gonna do so because you can clearly tell what you get. You get a pair of fists to beat the hell out of people. You get some handshaking Johnny Gargano newly sculpted style hands, and then you get the mic holding hands. And then the ones out of the packaging are the throne sitting style. So you get quite a bit of interchangeable hands. Four pairs of interchangeable hands for Ricky the Dragon football steamboat. All right, man, so for Ricky the Dragon, I think he looks badass. I like this figure, man. I like this head sculpt. I think that looks good. We covered this already. But I like the musculature. This is the Seth Rollins, the Randy Orton style torso. I like it a lot. I'm pretty sure they are. Not using any new parts here. The only new parts I see are on the feet or the, the lower legs, which we'll get into. But I really like this for Ricky the Dragon. I think they could have used bigger arms slightly, possibly, but I don't hate these arms. But maybe the Johnny Gargano Elite 105 arms, which are a slightly different sculpt than this. They're just a little bit more cut. But you know, it doesn't have any tattoos or anything on the back. It's just, you know, regular musculature with your butterfly joints. And then down here, it's just regular black tights. Nothing too crazy or over the top. It's just normal, you know, legs with tights. And then you do have the pin legs. And then this is where the newness comes in. We do have a new boot and foot sculpt right here, which is, it's definitely a unique look right here. I don't even know the proper terminology for these, but you do get the nice, they just, they feel really good and they pose around nice, which is good. But I don't know, there's something about this figure that's just elite or some might say ultimate. But you know, for Diaphragm, he has pretty good. I like how far he goes back right here. And then the butterfly joint is very nice as well. It goes back and forth there. You get all your traditional, oh man, that hand right there is loose as hell, but you get all your traditional ultimate edition articulation. You get the drop down hips, very good kick forward. He can do the split. That right there though, look at that right there. That is where I have issues. That is very egregious. So it does get a little bit loose on you there, but he still stands up nice. Double jointed knee, upper thigh cut. You do get the boot rotation right there. A little shin cut, which I wish they would put on every figure ever, but this is pretty much just being tr treated as a boot, but then you get the ankles down and up, you get the toe articulation, and you get a really good ankle rocker right there, which is nice. I like the figure's feeling hand, but the loose leg is definitely annoying and will get very annoying on you very quick like, but I still like the figure a lot, and I think that it's, I don't know, there's something about it that I just really enjoy. I think it's just the posability. I wish the legs were a little bit tighter, but in terms of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat comparisons, we do just have a couple here. You'll see that the, this Ricky the Dragon is a little bit taller because it is an ultimate, and I did do an arm swap on this one. I think I was using the arms on somebody else, and I think I have another Ricky the Dragon Steamboat that's similar to this, and I can't remember the exact series, but I think I head swapped this with the Defining Moments Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, or maybe I took a different head sculpt, or maybe this is the Defining Moments head sculpt on the most recent. What was that, Elite 97 or something like that? Maybe Elite 98? I can't remember that series off the top of the dome. Well, I know that's crazy, but sometimes I'd be making mistakes, but I like all these in their own way. I'm glad that we got a black gear instead of the traditional white that we've seen three different occasions now. We've seen three different white attire Ricky the Dragon steamboats, but I like these. I like all of his figures. I like the defining moments with the dragon gear, which I think they should re-release in the From the Vault. That's something I still don't know how we haven't seen, or an Ultimate Edition like Legends Ricky the Dragon steamboat with that kind of defining moments elite revamped would be really cool, but I like our Ricky the Dragon steamboat collections. I gotta find that chase figure, but that was something I've never seen. I've seen it in person a couple times on some toy hunts, not uh, yeah, I feel like we went on a toy hunt. Maybe it was that super stacked Walmart we found that one time. That was probably the most stacked Walmart I've ever seen in my lifetime, and I didn't grab it because we were buying so many other things. But that's definitely a figure I want to get. I like that yellow gear a lot, but that's it for your Ultimate Edition Ricky the Dragon Steamboat figure comparisons. All right, man, so for Ted DiBiase, you get quite a bit, man. I mean, you're, you're dealing with a full suit here, interchangeable heads, championship belt. You definitely get a lot here, but I think it makes the pack really, really worth it. Now, I did have to undress the suit here, but it does come in multiple pieces, and we will take a look at him in the suit, too, so don't worry about that. I will showcase the accessories by themselves, and then we'll 
take a closer look at him when he's actually wearing the accessories. But this jacket is immaculate. What a fantastic jacket. A damn good jacket. You have the pink bright foil with the black. You even have the little tie. You even get the damn pocket flag or whatever the hell you want to you pocket square, whatever you want to say there. It looks really, really good. You get the dollar signs on the collar and then you even get the dollar sign on the back. It looks and feels really high quality. Just great stuff overall. I really enjoy the jacket right here and I think that this suit and Ted DiBiase really makes the pack worth it by itself. Now you also get the matching pants and I really like the belt wrap right there. I could see you putting these on any other person man. I like the stripe down the side. Just high quality goods man. High quality cloth goods and I remember that report that came out a year or two ago talking about how the Barbie team was helping out with the wrestling figures somewhat and kind of teaching them or kind of giving them a crash course on how to you know make their cloth goods better and stuff like that and I think they've listened. I think they've nailed it. It's been absolutely amazing to see the growth from the cloth goods that we've seen over the different years from a tell but this is fantastic the pants look really good with the jacket and then you have your cloth goods here with the bow tie you guys know i'm a bow tie guy so really i could put this suit on my own figure because a pink bow tie that's right up my alley but you get the buttons down the middle now it does velcro in the back so you'd wrap this around the front and i mean i guess you could make him into a damn chippendale dancer or something like that if you wanted to and you could uh because his whole back would be out and then you just have kind of the you know the arms out and everything like that but it looks really good when you put this on and then you put the jacket on as you guys saw it looks really good especially when you have the belt of the pants over it and it just looks really easy because it goes in there like that and it sits over it and they did a fantastic job here really quality and clever and creative design to make it where it looks as easy as possible and it can still pose around you know if they made him a full shirt and you put the jacket over it, it's not like a human being the cloth will take up a lot of room and it will hinder the figure in a lot of ways now one thing he also comes with is the million dollar championship which we've seen for so many years i'd really like them to redo this where it's brighter and it kind of has that iridescent feel to it like these jewels and the gold and everything but it is kind of stretchy but we've seen this title for a lot of years it's been around for a long time but he also comes with this million dollar championship and then the head sculpt out of the packaging is this one here which is brand new that looks really really good i think the likeness is uncanny the hair sculpt the color the beard everything looks really damn good here for ted right there i like this a lot i, I think I'm, I'm pretty damn impressed with it. i think they did a really good job on our ted dibiase right here and then the other accessories that come out of the packaging you have a left fist and a mic holding hand and then in a moment we will open up the box so just like ricky the dragon you can open this up and it does come with the other accessories that the figure comes with and just like other ultimates he does come with interchangeable head sculpts and he also comes with so let's get into this first so he does come with his dollar bills it looks like these are hundreds so he has the stacks that he can flex on people with and showcase all the money he has which is awesome so i always enjoy this out of ted dibiase i love this this is a great accessory i'm glad that we have these implemented in the line makes for really cool photography and things like that and it's cool that they actually like photo real teched it so that it actually looks like you know hundred dollar bills especially from that time period so you have the old money and the green and then with the Cameron Grimes, you know, we had the blue money. You had the updated versions of money, which would be like the modern day hundreds or Benjamins. So it's pretty cool. And then for interchangeable heads, we do have this yelling expression, which is a new head sculpt. I know it looks like the older Ted DiBiase head sculpts, but I do believe this is brand new. It is, like, look at that. It's slightly more likeness. It's not as cartoony. It looks really, really good. Hair sculpt looks better. It looks more realistic. I think they did a really good job here. Kind of reminds me of Al from Home Improvement. And then you kind of get like this other kind of yelling expression which isn't quite as good I'd say or I don't know I guess they you know he's kind of like wide open laughing and then he's just kind of like ha ha and then he's like ah so it's kind of two different expressions there I apologize for that and then for his interchangeable hands he does come with the money holding hands which we saw before I think these first came with Cameron Grimes from the NXT figure that ringside exclusive NXT Cameron Grimes which are pretty cool he can hold the money so you take this you know you can take the hands right here and the money and then he can hold it like that so it's kind of like card holding hands or like, you know, when you're about to cast somebody at the shuttle realm and you're playing, you know, for your grandpa's soul. And then he does come with a pair of fists, a pair of mic holding hands, and then those same Johnny Gargano, hands on the waist, hand shaking, laughing uncontrollably style hands. Oh yeah, and Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hands. Don't forget about that name too. Alright man, so I want to get a shot with the suit on too because I think it's important to get that development before we remove the clothing to show the figure without the different stuff because there's a lot of clothing on this figure and it's pretty damn outstanding. It's kind of like a bodysuit as you guys will see. So you do have the undershirt here that is removable it's kind of like a damn I don't know, kind of like a male stripper type deal going on. You see what I'm saying right there? Not that I would know. But you have the bow tie in there. I really like the, the pink sheen and the black sheen. It just looks really, really good, man. But this is a jacket that goes over this, and you can't undo that. And then you have the pants underneath. So I think that's pretty pretty damn brilliant. I like that a lot. They did a good job here. I like the, the pockets on there. I mean, this has to be one of the more high-quality Ultimate Editions you'll see all year. You even have the dollar signs on the back here. And then you do have the pink striped pants. I guess people buying multiple of these just 
for the pants. I could see people, you know, having guys come out, like, entrance-wise with these pants on. Like, look at that pink belt, dude. You can put that on a damn Rollins. I mean, that looks sick as hell. I think they did a good job here, man. Really, really sweet job on the Ted DiBiase. But just to kind of see the articulation with the suit on, he can still pose around pretty damn good even with that, man. And he has those large knee pads on underneath this suit right here. But he still gets pretty good articulation with the suit on. I mean, I'm not seeing anything that would necessarily hinder it that much. I mean, is it going to be as good as if he didn't have the jacket on and all the clothes and stuff? You know, probably not, but it's still very sick, and I think that it still moves around really well. I am very impressed with this Ted DiBiase. Very outstanding figure overall, but I do want to get a shot of the figure in suit up next to some other suited Ted DiBiase figures. Now, for your Ted DiBiase figure comparisons, you're going to noticeably see that this Ted DiBiase is a lot taller and bigger than the other previous versions. And I want to say Ted was a tall guy. I want to say he was 6'4", or something like that. He may have even been an inch taller, maybe an inch shorter, maybe 6'2", something like that. But I still think that uh, he's pretty big here. Now, I don't know how he could really... I mean, I'm just going to pick a random figure, I guess. You know, let's just get Roddy Piper in here. He's pretty damn big in comparison, man. What what is up with these giant head sculpts, man? Dead gum. Head sculpts are massive, it seems like. Kind of like the street gear or the street fight Eddie Guerrero. Get Hulk Hogan in here, kind of see. Okay, these scale pretty good, but I mean, they are Ultimate Editions. I don't know, and maybe they're supposed to be the same size. It's just, you know, to get an idea, but the other, apparently the previous Teds were way too small. Because, I mean, this one, unless those are accurate and this one's too big, I'm not entirely sure. But you can definitely see the size comparisons. But we do have some different Ted to be Aussies here, just to kind of showcase what we have going on so you guys can see. But I wanted to at least get a shot of him in the suit before we, you know, before we take a look at the figure without the clothes and all that different stuff. I just wanted you to have an idea of what it looked like in the suit. So here's taking a look at Ted without his gear on. And I really like this torso. I can't tell if this is the new CM Punk torso or the Sami Zayn torso. I want to say they're very similar, if not the exact same. But I don't mind this torso for Ted DiBiase. I think it looks pretty good. I like the chest hair in there. You get that little bit of chest hair poking through. And then he just has standard arm. Pretty plain Jane gear. It's just white wrist tape. And then you do have like the gold with the silver dollar signs on the side, which is a very, you know, there's something about these classic gears that just hold up over time because I think that simplifying stuff just always holds up or just a simple design. You don't need the most over the top of gear every single time. It's almost kind of timeless and classic, but just a, you know, just regular, he's got a little schmutz on the back. But then it's just plain black. You have the large black knee pads, which I hate. And then you do have black and white boots with the dollar signs on the side. So that's something we've seen. And I want to say back in the day, they used to give him the tall boots. So this is, I want to say our first Ted figure in this wrestling style gear that doesn't have tall boots, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, but I, I don't remember off the top of the dome. But I don't know. I don't hate the figure, and the posability is pretty good. Pretty good kick forward right there. And it has that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat problem where it's not as bad. You can see it's holding its position instead of falling down. But it is on the ball joints there, the drop down hips. You get the upper thigh cut. Double jointed knee. His legs are not pinless, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, not pinless legs, but these large knee pads are going to get in the way. I just hate these large knee pads, man. And they're just so bad. Just absolutely awful. I feel like I need two of these, though, so that I can have a Ted in this wrestling gear. Because I'm, I'm going to have him with a suit on, period. But then I could get another one with this on and then use that suit for other things and fix-ups and stuff like that. But I don't really have a Ted to be... I used to have that Hall of Fame Elite way back in the day that came with the basketball and stuff. And I sold it years ago. So I don't really have a Ted to be Aussie figure comparison in terms of the wrestling gear. And I never found the Toys R Us exclusive Virgil. That's one I'm missing. I don't really have the new IRS. I got rid of my IRS. I just... I, there are holes in my collection. Everybody thinks I have this. I mean, I do have a stupid collection, but I have a ton of holes in my collection. You know, I'm not, I don't have a, I'm not a completionist. I don't have every single thing out there and it pains me, especially when we're getting reviews like this and I don't have all the comparisons I'd like to see. That's why my collection is stupid sometimes. I want to have a lot of figures so that you guys can see the comparisons and you can come to the review and say, oh yeah, that's cool compared to that and that, 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 and that. But I can tell you right now, this is the best Ted DiBiase action figure I think they've ever made. But I think that about wraps up our Coliseum collection wave number five action figure review WWE Ultimate Edition 2 pack of Ted DiBiase and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat man I had a lot of fun here man I think these figures are pretty damn good and I think it's going to be really tough to lead both of these guys off of the top 10 ultimates of the year when it comes down to it now am I just absolutely mind blown by anything I don't know if I'm mind blown by anything but I really like the Ted DiBiase especially in the suit I think it's a very high quality figure my only real gripes with the figures are that the, the large knee pads on Ted DiBiase I mean outside of that 
Batman, I think it's damn good. And he's he's pretty damn big. He is pretty damn big. Kind of reminds me of uh, like just some scaling issues. But again, maybe the other previous versions of Ted were way too small. Maybe that is the case. I would imagine that I feel like this one is more accurate than the shorter versions that we've seen in the past because those were using a very old leg mold and stuff like that. Some repaints and things of that nature. So maybe it is a case where this is the best Ted DiBiase action figure ever made. And then for Ricky the Dragon, I really like the attire. You know, we've seen a lot of white gears from Ricky. We had that yellow chase. We've seen some different versions like that. But this black version is sick as hell. I think he's very poseable. I think the legs do get a little bit loose in there, but you're going to have a ton of fun posing him around. He feels very good in hand, very high quality. I like the head sculpts for the most part. I think he's pretty cool. I like the gi and everything. And I like how we got some different things here with Ricky the Dragon that I really like. I think it's awesome. I, I like this set a lot. I think that compared to the rest of our Coliseum Collection waves, this is definitely one of my favorite sets. I mean, it's got to be in the top two or three, I would say. You know, I don't think, I don't know if it's number one. I'd have to kind of address that. Maybe one day we could rank those. I mean, we do have five of them. So, I mean, if I had to rank them, it's tough. I don't have the George the Animal Steel anymore because I used it for parts. But if I had to rank them, I probably, I might, it would be very close. It would be very close, I imagine, if I were to rank these sets. But this one's very damn good. You can go over to Mattel Creations, pick these up. At the time you're seeing this, they could be available. Just go over there. I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to go over to Mattel Creations. But again, a huge shout out to the Elite Squad, Mattel and Mattel Creations for sending this figure over and allowing me to review it for you guys so you guys can check it out. It's a great set overall. I'm thrilled with it pretty pretty much. I mean, I, I think it's damn good. Very damn good. Again, going to be very hard to leave these guys off the top ultimates of the year, but I think that's pretty much going to wrap the video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts on this set down in the comment section below. I'm getting the hell out. Huge shout out to our Patreon members. Of course, you guys are unbelievable. Thank you guys so very much for the support as always. You guys truly are such a blessing, but I'm getting the hell out. Hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know all of your thoughts down below on this set, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day, and I'll catch you guys later.